All right, all right. Matthew <laughs> McConaughey. <laughs> does he do that? Because that's not where I got it from. <laughs> yeah, he does. He goes, well, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> where do you get it from? Um, somebody in my like community sphere, like not not someone, not someone not that's well known. No, not Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> no. Um, he seems to be a cool dude, but you know, I don't, I don't know him personally. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. Um, welcome everybody. We are getting started soon. Uh, for those of you that are just joining in, we like to give people a few minutes to get, come in, get the notifications going, sending things out to Instagram, let people know on Instagram we're here. We are here every Tuesday at noon EST, um, to talk about industry related topics. Today, we're going to be talking about Prime Minister of Barbados' uh, speech, her name is Mia Amore Motley. Mia Amore Motley's speech at the Summit of America, she's going to be talking about that today. She said some incredible things, um, rally cry to the world, really. And so we're going to we're gonna play that uh, during the course of this, this live. Denise and I will talk about things, pull things out that we found to be insightful, interesting, that we want to, want to talk about. So that's what we got on the agenda for, for today. Um, but we'll still give people just a few more minutes. You know, it seems like most people don't come in until like, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes in. Hmm. So we'd like to give people some time for that. If you're, um, joining in now, um, and you're either on, cause we're doing this live on LinkedIn and we're also doing it on, on YouTube, YouTube live. So if you happen to place a comment, um, whether, wherever you are, LinkedIn or YouTube, we will see it. Um, and we will try to respond to your comments at answer any questions that you might have as we go through this. Um, or you could even share your comments of what you thought about the speech, too. You know, I don't know, Denise, I feel like this speech did not get a lot of like um, media play. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Have you seen it coming through your sphere? No, <clears throat> no, um, it didn't. I didn't become aware of it until you sent it to me through the Karen Hunter's show. Um yeah, which is weird to me. I don't know if, I don't know. Everyone is so wrapped up in the hearings at the moment mm. that that that's where it's sucking all the air out of maybe. So, but this is definitely important. And, you know, there's so many other things that are newsworthy that we don't hear about either. So. Yeah. Yeah. Those hearings should have taken place January 7th, 2021. That's 110%. <laughs> I think that's your opinion and the opinion of most Americans yeah. who believe that this was an attempted coup on our government. Yeah, I saw it. I actually remember saying to myself, stop working and watch this because you're going to need to see it live so that you can remember what you saw. So when they start trying to replay it and mm -hmm. turn it and twist mm -hmm. it, you you know what you saw. I know what yeah. I saw. Everyone I should I have been too. arrested January 7th. 100%. Yep. In including the um the senators and all the people that had something to do with allowing people to get in to do what they yep. did. I'm telling you, if nothing comes from this, there's going to, uh, uh, like, why bother even having a government then? Why bother? They bet, yeah, they, they put it out there. They better do something. They have to. They have to. <laughs> I remember that day, too. And I took an edible, and I was, <laughs> maybe that was not the best. That's not the best time. It was yeah. not the best time. A heavy one, I, too. You went milligram heavy I on did, that one. I did. I, I, I misread things. Things were misread. I was panicking. I was like, we have to go. It's time to go. This is the time. That's why I wanted everyone to get their passports. We're going to Home Depot, and we're leaving. Yep. Yep. My girlfriend's like, where the hell are we going? I'm like, I don't know, but we're not staying here. We're on the list. I know I'm on the list. I know I signed something. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they got me on a list. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're probably on most of the same list. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Um, but that's funny. No, <laughs> paranoia. Like, paranoia is is real. You know, sometimes with cannabis, you have to be careful. Um, it, <laughs> thanks. Thanks for telling me that. <laughs> you have to be careful, and then sometimes you have to like switch up the strain because it can just be the strain that you're working with. But anyway, what we were talking about the Jan January 6th and how that's getting a lot more media play than the Summit of the Americas, which is, if you're just joining us, um, the Summit of the Americas is the topic for today. We're going to talk about Mia Motley's um, speech in just a few minutes. Um, we're going to play the speech, talk about it. She said some really cool things, but it's kind of disappointing that um, it hasn't been as widespread and talked about 
as I, I would hope it to be. Um, Cause to me like this, this is the urgency, the stuff that she talks about in this speech, this is everybody, all y'all, all of y'all <laughs> need, to, yeah. need to be focused on this. This is, <sighs> this I, is I, not a dress rehearsal. No. <laughs> like let's let's be clear and she talks about the climate crisis and approaching a com climate crisis but i feel like we're already in it i feel like we're we're not waiting for it it's happening and there needs to be action there needs to be action now we can't wait for another five ten years before we even start going still before we start picking up steam it's it's yeah we're behind the eight ball on this as oh, always yeah. Because yeah. of the deniers, because of, you know, it's not a priority until we start seeing real drastic things happening to our people and yeah. across the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, and to the to the deniers, I mean, I try to, when I talk about, I, I'm, I'm trying to use the word climate action more than the word climate change. Because right now it's about mm. what, what are we going to do? We have to start doing things. Um, it's too late. Like, you can... There are so many theories about why the world is warming. Um, that it's being that it's man-made, that it's chemtrails, that it's fossil fuels. There's there's so many different perspectives on why is the world getting getting hotter. We know that the temperature changes and fluctuates, you know, over the, the since the Earth has been here. Mm -hmm. um, billions and billions of years has happened. This is this happens. It, temperatures rise, temperatures fall. We know this. But you need to start doing something about it. You can't just go, oh, well, you know, it's just people trying to make money from the solar panel industry. Yeah, I ain't going to lie. <laughs> it's, it's partially that. But you also are going to need, you know, different solutions, different ways of sustaining yourself, getting energy, feeding yourself, all of those things. It, we're, we're, past, we're, we're past worrying about, in my opinion, What's the cause? I mean, I think that there should be some energy put into what's the cause, but I think the bulk of the energy, like the 80-20 rule, we need to put the bulk of that energy into trying to figure out what are we going to do um, about all these cities, homes, properties, residencies, populations, farms, communities that are all going to be impacted in some mm -hmm. way or another by the change in the temperature. Yeah, we don't need to know the root cause to find solutions for it. It's not like, you know, a virus of some sort, right? We don't need to know the root cause of it to figure out how to combat it or adapt to it, right? There's solutions right, right now that are, that, that are here that we can use and start implementing broadly instead of just individually. Yeah, yeah. It's like the people that like, you know, they say arson. Um, I use arson sometimes or like a fire, a, guy, a house burning down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, am I going to stand around and go, who who started this fire? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> while it's burning, or am I going to start putting some putting some water out on, on the thing, and or start building a new home because I know that one's already destroyed. Right. I mean, yes, yeah, somebody should investigate who did it, but the majority of the people need to start figuring out what are we going to do now. Right. And um, I really do think that, that that people are so stuck on the politics mm. behind this stuff, and it's the reason why we can't move forward and we're going to see we're going to see how some of the politics play out in this in this speech um the, the guy at the end what's his name i didn't even i didn't even try to dedicate his name to memory but it's secretary blinken <laughs> he doesn't get a spot i've got any, i got other other data on points that it yeah <laughs> that I blinken he's gone <laughs> um but yeah i mean even just his response you're like the, the politics um you know, they get in the way sometimes of progress. I agree. But, all do right. You want that, do you want that graphic up? Uh, yeah, actually, you know, let's start with the um, let's the start with the uh, the video. Oh, okay, then let's get yeah. out of here. Then yeah. stop. Stand by to stand by, please. Sure, sure. All right. We are going to officially get started. Oh, wait a minute. What? Before we get started, I forgot one thing. One thing. Uh -oh. This is something that I've been learning from or um, some of the other people that do YouTube, do video podcasting, um, that we should do all of our like stuff at the beginning, our plugs, our, our, and I'm not going to say shameless, because um, yeah, I feel like that's just kind of weird to say it that way. That is a weird way to say it. <laughs> it's a weird shameless. way to say it, right? Sh a yeah. shameless plug. It's a plug. 
I mean, it doesn't mean shame comes from plugging your own stuff. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the reason why we're doing this is because we believe in something. We have something that we want to say and we need revenue, you know, in order to continue to do it. We need capital in order to continue Mm -hmm. to do it. So, um, you know, we are Trello Technologies open to the public for investment. Anybody can invest in Trello. You don't have to be what's called an accredited investor, um, an individual making, you know, a wealthy individual. We get our capital, our funding from the community, from the community that we're looking to impact. And we've been doing it since, uh, you know, our first time 2018. And we've been continuing to do crowdfunding ever since. So if you um, want to support this mission to grow whatever you want, where you want, and we're going to talk about the reason why we think that's so important coming up as we talk about Mia Motley's uh, speech. But if you want to support the, the types of things that she's talking about, the, the, the solutions, um, if you just joined us, you, you might have missed our, us going off about how, you know, it's it's not climate change now, it's climate action. What are we going mm-hmm. to do? We are at Trello focused on what are we going to do? What do we need to build? What do we need to create um, so that we can sustain ourselves, feed ourselves no matter where we are, maintain our sovereignty and make sure that we understand what we're putting in our bodies and putting, you know, and in, in, in feeding ourselves. Um, so we have, um, you know, a, a flagship product called Trello Grow LST. It's a, the only patented solution that will train a tall plant to grow in a vertical stacked arrangement. Uh, and we've got other ideas and other things that we're looking to do. Um, we're expanding, we're growing. So we're looking for capital. We need capital to do it. Um, so if you want, are interested in becoming an investor, please check out our WeFunder campaign. You'll see the URL scrolling at the bottom. Check that out. Um, you can it, as, as low as 250 bucks, you can become an investor in Trello Technologies. Um, check out the page. We do updates weekly. Uh, we do live Q and A sessions, so you kind of have to be on that page to know about these things, or either uh, join our newsletter at Trello.io. Um, so um, that's that's one way that we do this. We also um, my background before I got into um, before I started Trello Technologies and got into the ag tech space, I was also a natural catastrophe risk engineer, which is the reason why um, the climate change things and and and, and what we're seeing. Really, kind of, I've seen that. I've seen what happens when there's devastation. I've seen what happens when there's hurricanes, there's floods. How it impacts a company, how it impacts the community, um, and how it will impact our food supply. Um, and it's not good, uh, based on you know my experiences of being on the ground and seeing it. it it's not good. Um, there are ways that, as a business, as a farmer, as a cultivator, that you can try to reduce those risks to your company, to your business, to your livelihood. There's a way, there are ways that you can be more energy efficient with your uh, um, so that you're not relying so much on these high energy prices, not relying so much on high fertilizer prices. We talked about that a couple of lives ago. So we also do consulting. Um, it's not just about selling a product. It's also about sharing our knowledge and sharing it with other you know, uh, companies that are looking to make sure that they've got their, you know, they've got longevity. They've got sustainability, not just because it's, you know, the cool thing to do or the, you know, it's, it's because it will actually increase your bottom line, but it will also actually reduce how much change, how much of this, all this like change and these fluctuations, how much it impacts your business. So if you want to know more about, you know, how we could potentially help, um, if you could schedule a free consultation with uh, myself, uh, just go to Trella.io. Uh, the URL is scrolling again at the bottom of the line the bottom of the screen, rather, trello.io. Click that. Uh, there'll be a, a button that says schedule free consultation. Um, check that out. There's a video. There's some information. Um, you know, been, been consulting for over 15 years, um, you know, trained engineers to consult, created engineering guidelines, created procedures for some of the top insurance companies, AIG, FM Global, Liberty Mutual. I am not um, young or new to this this risk <laughs> consultant game, trust. So <laughs> you are young, though. Uh, I, I, thank you, thank you. I am, I am young. Um, thank you. I'll take that. Mm-hmm. So, but I'm not, I'm not green when it comes to this risk consultant game. Trust. I've seen, I've seen some things. Um, and if you are um, interested in getting, you know, our insight, uh, having another a, a second set of eyes, look at what you're doing. Um, let us know. Hit us up. We're here. We're here to help. We're here to help. Um, so uh, let's. Yeah, I think that was that was all I had to had to That's say. That's all you got. That's all, all I right. got. So let's get I into like Mia Motley's uh, speech. All right. Boom, 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 boom. 
You see her? Everything is good? I do. All right, you ready? Yeah. There we go. Bless my eyes this morning. The sun is on the rise again. The way earthly things are going, anything can happen. Mr. Secretary, there is so much trouble in the world. Excellencies, there is so much trouble in the world. Heads of government, there is so much trouble in the world. Heads of state, there is so much trouble in the world. I've chosen the language of Bob Marley this morning, not because I'm an apostle of Bob, as you probably have realized by now, but also because he reminds us of the day-to-day -day reality of our people and of our citizens. And we have come to Los Angeles hopeful that we're not just going to engage in speeches or we're not just going to engage in platitudes, but we go home to make a difference to people at perhaps the most difficult time this world has seen in 100 years. We have three global crises, and any one is sufficient to bring us down. The climate crisis hurts from you here in California in fires to us in the Caribbean through the heart attack of hurricanes and the chronic NCDs of water crises and droughts or floods, depending on where you go. We fight the pandemic. And even as we talk about the pandemic, we need to start to qualify it because we fight the COVID pandemic without realizing that the slow onset pandemic of antimicrobial resistance is already upon us, being fueled further by how we farm, how we treat each other with the abuse of antibiotics, and how we literally allow those things to flow into our environment and contaminate our water system. And as if that was not enough, we now fight the prices of food and fuel and fertilizer, knowing full well that the only destination thereafter is going to be a debt crisis and an economic crisis if we do not intervene to break the slide. Pause this My for me, Denise, if you don't mind. Snuffy G. More. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, so this is what we're going to do. We're playing um, Mia Motley's speech uh, on the 9th Summit of Americas, which was in Los Angeles. Um, and we don't feel like it got enough play, so we want to make sure that we actually play it so that people hear what she said, understand her words, understand the concern. I I kind of, the reason why this one kind of, this speech, the reason why I wanted to share this speech during this live was she started out right away with climate. Um, then the pandemic, and then the food, food fuel, she hasn't said anything about Ukraine. I think that this issue of climate is a much bigger issue than the Ukraine issue. Um, it has a much bigger impact. I'm not saying that Ukraine is not a, a does not have a global impact, but I think it's not as big. This climate, this climate thing. I'm, I'm, I was very happy to, to hear her use that as the, the first thing that she talked about. When she talks about there's so much worry in the world, there's so much going on in the world. Her very first thing was climate, climate, climate. And then her third thing was the food and the fuel and the fertilizers, all the things that we need to continue running our countries and our lives. Um, it, I just wanted to point that out, that out of all the things that she could have possibly said, number one was, was climate. Do you have anything to add to that? Yes. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, you, Ukraine is, is big and it does affect food, um, especially to some developing countries when it's the main source of grains. Um, and the I read something the other day that's saying that if we don't figure out how to export what they're they're growing right now, because Russia has kind of stopped all of that stuff from flowing out of Ukraine, then we're going to have a real food crisis more than what we're going to have more immediate than 
what people are anticipating, especially to some of the African countries and some other um, countries that rely on Ukraine's grain. So I, I think, like we talk about all the time, Asia, everything is connected. Like, it, it, and, and everyone is jockeying for the priority and the position of being like, no, this is the most. No, no, this is the most. It's like, let, let's just take a breath. Like, everything is connected. And it starts with climate, right? It starts with, if we don't get a handle on some solutions here, then we're not going to have anything else to really discuss. We're not going to talk about financial institutions. We're not going to talk about whatever. But if we if we don't get control of this, this take that climate action that you were saying, then we're all just... What are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. And I mean, like the food, the food thing, you know, and I think the food insecurity has been an issue before Ukraine. Ukraine. 100%. Yep. Ma- makes it even worse. Um, does yep. not help the situation whatsoever. But food insecurity has been there before. And, it'll, un- and unless we get it together, it'll be there even after. Um, yep. You know, people have been, been starving. Uh, gosh. It, I, 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 I just like to say food insecurity versus food scarcity because there's been times where food is available, but people just don't mm-hmm. want to get access to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, go, let, let's play on and see what else she okay. has to say. What evidence do we need? You see men sailing on the ego trip, mm. blast off on their spaceship, million miles from reality. No care for you, no care for me. If I could have sung it, you would have joined me. But I don't need you to join me in the words of this song. I need you to join us in the chorus of action that our people need, not want. Our people need immediate intervention. Six-week crops and 12-week crops is what is going to feed our people. We need to be able to shield them from the price of fertilizer that is making their efforts almost impossible. We need equally and we talked a little bit about that too, Denise, minutes. if you want to pause real quick, um, about the, the price of fertilizer. Um, I think it was maybe like three or four lives ago. Mm-hmm. We talked about the price of fertilizer going up again. Um, and yeah. maybe even it's probably, it might be even higher than it was. I think it was a 2008 spike, um, around that time frame, and then it's spiking again and it may be even worse. Um, but yeah, I mean, for fertilizer is increasing the six to 12 week crops that she talks about. Um, you know, those are things that we're focusing on at Trello too, is how can we figure out how to grow a wider diversity of those types of plants indoors? Because the reason why I think that indoors is is important is one, it helps to protect the environment because you have so much climate change. You got to consider, you know, uh, heat intensity, hail, floods, drought. So being able to grow indoors kind of helps to reduce the risks to all those external environmental factors. Um, but you don't see a lot of a lot of different things being grown six week and twelve week crops. I think the majority of the things that are being grown indoors now are like microgreens, lettuce, shrubs. Those are like four weeks, four to six weeks. Um, so there's the need to diversify what we grow. All right, you're good. Mr. Brown and Prime Minister Davis say already this morning that the debt crisis is already among many developing countries. We simply do not have the fiscal space to respond to crises not spawned by ourselves, Mm. but spawned by others. And we are facing a double jeopardy. Our countries were those from whom wealth was extracted in order to build the developed world. Our countries were left at independence with no compact, no money to finance basic rights of housing and health care and education. And when we fought to do it, now we find ourselves having those efforts crowded out, literally, by our inability to be able to face and find the money because we are using it to recover from climate crises, not of our own making. Where does the double jeopardy come? that it is a very industrial revolution that the blood, sweat, and tears of our ancestors finance that is now causing us not to be able to respond to the needs of our people in the most basic of ways that humanity requires. My friends, there is so much trouble in the world, and we think we've found a solution, but we want to tell people only about financing after the climate crisis. 
we need to be able to prepare before the crisis so we can reduce what we have to spend by seven times. We need to recognize that adaptation has no private sector follower because there's no return on investment. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, yeah, we can stop there. Um, I think, you know, as a poor profit company, like I understand that term return on investment, like you need to use your money so that you, so that it gives you some sort of longevity so you can do the next thing. But when it comes to things like, like she's talking about, there's, this is all long-term. Like if you don't do something, I just don't think that, I don't think there's a lot of long-term thought um, with some of the, some of the individuals that make the decisions on how the money is spent. There's greed. We talked about that a little bit before we got on the call. Um, there's definitely a greed factor there, but there's, well, where's my return on investment? I get, I get, I got to go in just a little bit. I get a little bit frustrated when I'm talking to potential investors, not all, not all, but some that talk about the return on investment so heavy when we're talking about food security. It's, it's just, if you don't have anybody, like if, if you can't feed people, things are going to get nuts. There are going to be food riots. You're not yep. going to be able to continue business as usual. People aren't going to be able to feed themselves, not going to be able to purchase your goods, not going to be able to use your services because they're so hungry. And not everybody, no, maybe not you, the person that might be watching this. It might not be you and your family, but it, it's going to be some people, some members of the community. It, it impacts us all. Everything is connected. Everything. Okay. So I, I just... I, I I understand her plead to people to, to not be so focused on, is this an investment? No. I mean, it is, yes, because if we don't do something, you're not, there's nothing, nothing coming. But this isn't about how can I become a billionaire off of this food crisis? This is how can I ensure that there's a population so that my business can continue to operate because there's people to actually operate with. <laughs> yeah. It, it just... I think the perspective has to shift, and I'm glad that she she brings this up in the, in this speech. And, and I think oh, it, we have never been uh, speaking of, of of America specifically. We have never been a proactive country, in my opinion. We have always been reactive, and we see it in our politics. We see it in how we do business. We, we may say we think long-term. It's like, oh, this will help us down the road or whatever. But that is all reactive to what's happening now. There's The things down the road is not preemptive. It's based on what's happening right now down the road. So, and it goes to ego. It goes to greed. What can I get right now that I can secure my position in, in corporate America or the world stage instead of, the benefits of thinking about preemptively tackling some of the most challenging issues. You know what I mean? It's, and mm -hmm. I think that speaks into the whole return on investment. People just want to know right now, like what, what's in it for me? That's all how it's always been. What's in it for me? Well, we need to stop thinking like that because it's not helping anyone. We need to think outside of ourselves because we're not even going to have anything for ourselves if we don't think outside of ourselves. Yeah, you know, we'll we'll learn. Hopefully, we're gonna have to because this um, individual me me me. There's lack. I gotta secure it for just myself. Is not that's not sustainable. No, <laughs> no. We've seen it in history. It's not sustainable. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, you you gotta you gotta spread the wealth if you want longevity. It's best to keep everybody happy, everybody full, all the bellies full, um, and. Uh, be able to, you know, be able to, to party with everybody. <laughs> right. I'm all for communes. I'm telling you. I used, I used to be like, ooh, that's kind of weird. But now I'm like, yes, my group of my friends and family, let's have like a little city for ourselves and let's make it happen. <laughs> anyway. That's what's going ready? for people. Yep. Yep. You're in it, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I hope I make your commune cut too. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> and adapting to the climate realities. That is the function of the state. 
And therefore, the international community is required in the justice of the moment to help us prevent loss of life and property for a crisis we didn't create. We need to reform the international financial institutions architecture. Yes. How can we have an international bank for reconstruction and development that does not reconstruct and develop in today's world? 100%. Where is the reconstruction from the climate crisis being financed? Where is the reconstruction from the pandemic being financed, the post-pandemic recovery? Where is the platform for middle-income countries that house 75% of the world's poor? Mm. But because they're middle-income, we don't remember that. Where is the climate finance being targeted to, justifiably and fairly so, when the numbers show that only 15% of climate finance is going to the climate vulnerable countries? Mm. I've not come here just to use words. Let us be practical. Mm. We have a duty to solve a few problems. And I think that the format of this meeting needs to change if we are to be able to see real progress and not simply to be part of the problem. We need to talk with each other and not talk at each other as we are doing in set piece speeches. We need to engage and see how we can make a difference in a real way. We have migrants coming not because they choose to come, but because it is their last option. Mm. They don't choose to leave who they love and where they love, willingly. And when they come, we now know that we don't need to treat them poorly because this year has shown that there's a dignified way to treat migrants. Surprise. We've seen that in Europe. We need to see it in the America. And we all know why. <laughs> and, and we all know why. No, surprise, we can be nice. Yeah, surprise, we can be nice to a certain few if your skin is a little bit lighter. Mm. Um, also, too, I wanted to say something. She was talking about, ah, crap. I can't remember. I just had a thought. Um, but she was talking, what did she just say? I'm going to just rewind for a second. Uh, they don't choose to leave because, is it that one? When they talk about, she talks about people aren't choosing to leave their, their, their homes. Yeah, that and, and, and the way that this format needs to change. Yeah, um, yeah. My, my question, I think, Asia, is why are people so unwilling to use their power to actually make some significant change? Like, what's the fear? What, what's holding everyone back from it? Like, I feel that there, people are innately good. I, I do. I truly believe that. So then what's stopping everyone from taking these actions? What's that fear? I don't know that it's fear. I think it's, it's greed and ego, but I'm not, I think it, it, it depends on the individual. So that's really hard to say. That's really hard to say. I can't answer that question. Well, that's disappointing. Sorry. You always have the answers. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, people don't leave just because they want to see something better and get something for free. <laughs> They're being forced to leave because yeah. poor people don't have the power. <sighs> we need to see it in the Americas. Mm. And I don't place that burden on the United States of America alone. I place it on all of us, including my own country, because we cannot be part of the solution by simply talking from outside and not literally putting our shoulders to the plow. The International Organization of Migrants needs our support. And we need to make sure that as we reform the organization of American states, that instead of it seeking to become a political player, mm. it needs to become a player that simply brings opportunity to our thank people you, in the thank Americas, you, thank Alaska, you. to uh -huh. Chile. And how does that come? If we did nothing else in the next decade in the OAS, but to allow our people to become bilingual and trilingual, people under 18 and adults, then we would change the economic possibilities of this hemisphere in ways that we can't even contemplate. Mm. We need to ensure that if we fight this climate crisis injustice, then we fight it not just as small island developing states and developing countries calling for fairness for our nations, but we provide that fairness to our people. And how do I mean? We have taken a decision in Barbados 
that there can be no award of any contracts for renewable energy without taking into account the bounty that must go to our people. And therefore, accordingly this year, I announced that every rooftop that is owned by anyone in Barbados will have the right to have placed on it as of right, not a choice, not a right to apply, as of right. Photovoltaic systems from two and a half kilowatts to five to 10 to 20. Why? Because we don't own individually the wind, the mm. sea, and the sun. It is the testimony yeah. of the nation. And I like that. We don't own individually the wind and the sun. I'm glad to see that she's doing um, solar uh, panels for everybody um, as a right. I mean, that's that's incredible. I think you were talking a little bit about uh, the cost of solar um, and there's some tariffs and things. I, I don't know if she talks about how she's going to fund it, where they're going to get funding from. I think there's been some rumor of Canada, perhaps, or China, um, which I'm sure people in the, in the U.S. government aren't, aren't psyched to hear that China or Canada are going to be funding, um, you know, solar panels in these quote unquote underdeveloped countries because it gives China and Canada some sort of leverage, perhaps, in, in these countries. So that's the politics that's that, that, that's at play. It's she just wants to put solar panels on everybody's GD roof. Right. Um, and I mean, it's like, people probably think that's insane. People probably think that's insane. But I think it's a, I think it's an excellent idea. And I hope that she's able to, to figure out how to get it done and how to get it done quickly, because it's that's going to be a, a very big task. We, can you pull up that um, graphic on renewable energy? Yeah. Stand by. Because there are pros and cons to all of these different types of uh, renewable energy. Um, you got on this graphic, which um, we got from a gentleman named Marcus Wimmer, W-I-M-M-E-R, Marcus Wimmer, um, on LinkedIn. He does these really great graphics that you can download for free, reuse them for your own purposes. So um, if you're on LinkedIn, you can follow him. You'll see all of the stuff that he does. It's pretty cool. Marcus Wimmer. Um, his Marcus is M A R K U S. I could put that in the comments, perhaps at, at the end, how to get access to this this graphic. But it covers solar, wind, geothermal, hydro, and biomass. Um, I like all of them for different reasons. Like they all have pluses and minuses. Um, but I like that she stuck with solar. And this graphic is showing that the, the cost to, to to do solar is a lot less than a lot than a lot of the others. Like biomass is incredibly expensive, whereas solar is like maybe 30%, it looks like, um, the cost of, uh, of biomass. And because they're on the Caribbean, it makes total sense. I mean, they got access to all that sun. The uh, the daily light integral, DLI, um, is really high. A lot of photons coming, out, coming down in, in that area for a long amount of time. You know, up here in the Northeast, we only really get a really great... Um, we only get really good sun to grow for like, you know, six months maybe. Um, but they'll be able to do that uh, for a good amount of time, which means, and I'd have to really look at this to be sure, but depending on the size of the solar panels, it means that um, they don't have to worry about trying to store it um, so much to reuse it later. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they do probably want to try to store it because it can be reused elsewhere. Like you can transfer that energy to something else perhaps. But here in like the Northeast, we want to try to store our energy because you're not going to get enough sun. So you try to figure out how to store that energy so that you can use it later in the day when, when, it's, when, when it starts to get dark or during those, you know, winter months, fall months when you don't get as much sun. Um, but they, they're perfectly like solar would be perfect for them. So I really do hope that, um, they can do that. The other thing that they need to consider, though, when they're doing this solar, and I, I, I hope that someone is there helping to consider this, too, is a lot of the solar panels will probably be mounted on roofs, um, and they're in a hurricane zone. So they have to be really oh. mindful about um, how are the solar panels secured? Um, are they secured to the structure, the primary structure, not you know just 
uh, laying up there with uh, cinder blocks holding them down. Because trust, I've seen all different types of like makeshift ways of securing some, something on a roof. But if you're going to be in a hurricane zone, um, you got to really make sure that these solar panels are secured properly, that they've been tested. There are there are testing standards out there that will um, give you like a, a mile per hour rating on, on your solar panels. Um, most solar panels, when I was... Uh, uh, with uh, I was on a board of a of industry called IBHS, the uh, insurance, um, I- the Institute of Insurance for Building and Home Safety. But anyway, they would do um, live, like large scale tests. They they build the actual building. They put some stuff on top of the roof, and they would blow these huge, like they think they had these really great, really big fans, and they would blow wind at a building, so you could actually visually see what happens when. The wind hits the building, goes above the roof, hits the solar panels. What will the solar panels do? Mm-hmm. And we we were there for a demonstration, and I learned that the solar panels um, that are quote unquote wind wind rated, in order to pass that test, they need only not fall off the like not fly off the roof. So what I mean is, it'll pass the test if the solar panel doesn't leave the roof and like land on your car or land on the floor, which means that. It will pass the test if the solar panel just flops around, rolls on your roof. But as long as it never comes off your roof, it, it gets that wind rating. Well, you huh. can't use the solar panel if it's been moved, dislodged, right. been rolling around the roof. The wires and all that have been disconnected. It's not That's not a real pass. But right. you have to be very aware of how these things are tested. What is the testing protocol? How, what's the actual pass in, in, in um, um, what's the What does it really mean to pass? And how are the tests actually... Um, conducted. So a lot of people think that they may have wind rated solar panels um, when they actually just have solar panels that won't fall off your roof um, during huh. a hurricane. Huh. So, so something to consider. And if you feel like you want to, if you're an individual that's looking into solar panels for whatever purpose it might be, and you want a, a second set of eyes on the plans from a third party perspective that's looking at this, hit us up. Uh, Trello.io, we do consult. You can schedule a free consultation for that. Um, but I don't know, Denise, if you wanted to add anything or we could just go back to the, to the video. No, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. And just, and just be careful too, because you can't outright buy in Massachusetts at the moment. I don't believe you can just outright buy solar panels for your home. You're, you basically rent it from a company. Um, and therefore your house is the collateral. So just be careful when you're trying to refinance your home or take out a uh, loan for your kid's college. Um, against your house that there is a possible lien on your house because you're renting these solar panels and not able to buy them outright. So just something to think about when you are looking into the solar panel thing. And there's a huge thing happening with the United States and China around the tariffs. So just be careful about the pricing of them too because uh, the pricing is going to skyrocket shortly. Yeah. Good point. point. Here we go. Uh, oh, let me get rid of this one. Sorry. Let me stop sharing and let me bring back the prime minister. There we go. Maybe we can at the, we got a lot of time left. I feel like a, um, the bulk of what, what I noticed that I wanted to talk about, we've hit. Do you want to fast forward to the end so we can see the lovely response from oh. what's his face? Blinking. <laughs> Let's see. Bah, bah, bah. So she Denise and I, about... oh, go, go. Oh, I, was, I was just going to say, Denise and I were talking about this before we we, we started the live. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we watched the speech um, all the way through. And at the very end, and she, me, PM Motley says so many great things about how all of the different, you know, state entities need to come together to find a solution that will fix all of these crises, these three crisis issues that she, that she talks about at the very beginning. We need, Action, action, action. We need to do something. Not talking, not standing up here on the platform talking. We need to do something. It's a really great speech. And then at the very end, in my opinion, we see an example of the very same thing. This is the reason why we can't get anything done is because people are more worried about the politics or what's the right thing to say or how, you know, versus listening to what she's really saying and, and taking the proper action. This was just, in my opinion, a very disappointing end, um, not on her speech, but end to this, this video clip. Oh, 100%. And I just want to add to, I hope people, I just put the link to this YouTube uh, in our comments. Thank um, you. 
I think everyone really should listen to this. She, like you said, Asia, I'm just uh, saying basically what you just said, but she has a lot of good things. But there's a, there was another thing that I liked in it too, towards the end where she talks about procurement and she's like, people aren't willing to give to us because we're just a small, we're just a small order, you know? And we need to stop thinking as in small orders. I mean, we see that even in at Trellis Company. Oh right? yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> if you don't have a big bulk order, then we're not even gonna entertain the idea. And it's like, well, I can't afford a big bulk order and I don't even need it, you know? So where are those people who are willing to give us the things that we need in smaller orders? And this goes on to what she was saying too. She's like, people aren't even giving to us because the procurement is, we don't even reach that threshold that they they allow or that they want to entertain. So that's a, that's another thing that's uh, blocking yeah. everybody from progress. Yeah, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. She, that was that's, that was also something that I was like. Right? I, yeah, if, if, if I need one. <laughs> right. And you could supply it to me, sell it to me. No, you, it's not enough. We we'll have to charge know. you. Yeah. I mean, for something like this, we're not talking about, you know, Air Jordans. We're talking about, <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about solar panels, food, fertilizer, things right. that will, you know, safety equipment, things that are actually like standard in a, in a, in a requirement for life. And Loans. You're, and you're worried Loans. about, oh, the, you know, the size of the order isn't big enough. So then, you, so then now they got to get together with a bunch of different countries and figure out how do we bulk order all this stuff, which just right. takes up more time and mm -hmm. actually probably makes it more expensive for them. Because yep. um, now they got to like split it up and, and, mm -hmm. and divvy it. It's, that's a logistical nightmare. Uh, 100%. Yeah. All right, here we go towards the tail end. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Would have played its role in the history of the Americas. I hope that we leave here today conscious that we must never again come to a summit to talk at each other, but simply to talk with each other in partnership and for the purpose of the prosperity of our people. Thank you. Lovely way to end. Huge. Thank you. And then you have this jerk face. Calm down, calm down. Thank you very, very much, uh, Prime Minister. Um, in the words of Bob, uh, no woman, no cry. Don't shed no tears. Let's act. We can sing a redemption song together. Thank you. Cringe. Cringe. Um, the chair now recognizes his excellent. Cringe. And you know that woman just said. To the, yeah. <laughs> that woman just said all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. About the urgency, the need, how we can, an example of what we're trying to do being precise on what we need, you know, she's giving out like, here's what we need to do. His response is, I don't even know how to de define that, that response, but it was, he didn't, did he hear? Oh. He, I think, I don't know, Denise, you can. We you talked about this. We went off, actually. We went, we went off. It, number one, it's cringy. Number two, it's a typical white male response, right? When he, he has to say something because they can't just shut their mouths and not say anything. He could have said anything else, anything else. But you're going to quote Bob Marley and not even correctly in this context? Like, you don't even know what the hell you're talking about. So shut up. Shut up. You don't know anything about redemption. Like, you don't know anything about anything. <laughs> You could have said, I agree, we need to, the format of this meeting should change. It should be more actionable than just talking. There, he could have said anything. He was like, maybe we should adopt that in America, that every house should have a solar panel instead of having solar panel fields that are taking up land. I mean, w we should be talking about that too. But no, he had to be trite. He had to be funny or feel like he's relatable by by copying how she started off the whole fantastic speech. Yeah, it felt dismissive too. Yeah, yeah, agreed. But nonetheless, PM Motley, we heard you. Yeah. We heard you. Um, it was empowering for me, her speech, um, to give me more fuel, more oomph to continue on this mission to grow whatever you want, where you want. 
Um, it's got me thinking about some different things that I've kind of put on the shelf that I think we need to start doing a lot sooner. Um, and, you know, I'm going to follow her, follow her progress. And if, if there's any way that I could be of any assistance to, to any anybody out there that's trying to do something similar, please let me know. Um, it, it would be an honor to help you um, maintain a level of sovereignty when it comes to food, because um, that's what we really all need. And, and I think she says in the speech too. I, I I know. I just I just thought of it. It it was like we need to come in as like a community. And if people aren't going to take care of this for us, if the government's not going to intervene and start making solutions for us, then we need to do what we need to do. And that speaks to your your voice about sovereignty and doing what we need to do for ourselves. Because we, I mean, it's clear nobody's helping us. Nobody is going to help the way we want to be helped or the urgency in which we need the help. And it's not just us, but it's the whole world. So we need to start taking action and start doing it ourselves. Yeah. Superman is not coming. We, it, it's us. It's, it's going to have to be us, everybody. So um, with that being said, we'll be back um, next week. Uh, please, if you want to try to um, engage, learn more about our consultation, go to Trella.io. If you want to become an investor in what we're doing, um, have some skin in the game, uh, support, and also, uh, you know, put yourself in a position to, to win when we win, uh, please check out our WeFunder campaign. Um, and, um, we'll be back next Tuesday. It'll be, uh, the 20th, June 20th. Wow. So, you know, we're going to have to talk about Juneteenth because well, yeah. I have, I, I, yeah, I got, I got to talk about, we have to set aside some time and talk about Juneteenth and the history of it. But, um, Come back next week, next Tuesday at noon EST. Um, and I don't know, anything else besides that, Snuffy, that we need to talk about? I, I don't anything? think so. I can't believe next week is going to be the 20th of June. That's all I'm saying. That's Time's flying. Time. Time's yeah. flying. All right. all right, everyone. Matt Peace, Matt Love. We'll see you next week.